So we had uh, one more session in our three week series. Without losing time, I'll hand over to Dr. Newton. He's going to give us a talk on the science of past life regression. Dr. Newton. Thank you, Chandra, for an amazing uh, meditation session. Uh, first time uh, I'm participating in your uh, guided uh, meditation session. I, it's so profound. <laughs> you, your voice is so soothing. It really guided us into those states of uh, consciousness where you're mentioning about uh, beyond time space where there's no body and uh, no space, no locality, non-locality. And really, uh, I felt that uh, transportation into uh, higher conscious states. So thank, thank you for this beautiful session. Thank you. So dear friends, uh, we are fortunate uh, to have these kinds of uh, beautiful sessions guided uh, by uh, Chandrasekhar ji uh, every day, almost like uh, more than uh, 40 days, I think 50 days, uh, he was uh, sharing his uh, profound um, uh, the wisdom that he carried always and also his love. I could see what is uh, uh, most prominent uh, in this session I felt is in your voice, there is uh, compassion, there is beautiful, uh, very, very tangible uh, love. Uh, it's the purest form of love that you're sharing. And we are very fortunate. And thanks uh, once again, uh, Chandraji and all the friends here. Thanks uh, for giving me the opportunity to share about uh, past life regression. Uh, it's my favorite uh, topic. That's how I stepped into this path of uh, meditation. That's how I was interested in spiritual path. Uh, when I met uh, Brahma Sri Pita Mahapatriji 30 years back, uh, 1989, when I learned meditation practice, at that point of time, I was uh, like a uh, non-believer of anything because I come from a, a, a different background where my father uh, was uh, a kind of an atheist. He used to encourage me to study, read Karl Marx, Lenin, communist uh, philosophy because my friends, uh, my father's friends, all of them are communists. So I was always in contact with them. So when I came in contact with uh, Patriji, I liked uh, the approach of Patriji because he's a most scientific approach. He did not say that uh, you have to be rigid, you have to follow these kinds of rules. And he said, just very simple. You have to relax and close your eyes and sit in a comfortable posture and observe breathing. And when I started doing it, I found uh, so many interesting experiences. I experienced something uh, very beautiful. After my 40 days initial practice, 40 days of sadhana, I had my experience of past lives. I experienced some of my past lives. So it was a mind blowing experience for me because at that point of time, I didn't have a clue that uh, we have so many lifetimes Patriji just introduced us, uh, we were five people at that time in Karnul. So we used to be, every uh, evening we used to be there with Patriji. And one night we used to spend with him. And uh, we used to meditate and share our experiences. So at that point of time, when these past lives emerged, I thought all of them are just uh, my imaginary experiences. I had no clue that it is something like a past life that is uh, emerging in my consciousness. And uh, I was always carrying that skeptical uh, nature, skeptical mind. 
because I think uh, everyone, each one of us always search for some kind of evidence, some kind of breakthrough experience. For me, the first big breakthrough occurred uh, in 1992, 91, when I first time experimented with past life regression. I conducted past life regression session, 91, uh, on my grandmother, later on with uh, another uh, meditator who, was, who used to come to Buddha Pyramid Jhana Kendra in Karnul. So he was speaking an unknown language. Uh, and uh, he was also writing uh, the script, the language that he was speaking. So the alphabets of that language. Later it was validated, confirmed as a Russian language. He was a Russian in the past life. So that's the first, uh, my breakthrough experience. More than my own experience, I had uh, uh, experienced something like a, a aha moment when I have witnessed a person speaking a strange language. And then my mind was so open at that time. And I want to investigate more. I want to know more about uh, past lives. Why, what is the purpose of reincarnation? Why we need to come back multiple times? Why can't we just live one day and one lifetime and complete everything and go? What is the very purpose of this? So uh, what happened is I was continuing with my sessions. That time, uh, Dr. Lakshmi was my classmate. We were medical students. So that, when I used to share all her, uh, my experiences, she always used to encourage. She joined my uh, research work. We used to jointly conduct uh, multiple sessions every day. So dear friends, today uh, I'm going to share some kind of uh, pointers, like a uh, certain kinds of uh, insights that I learned from uh, the science of past life regression. Why do we need to uh, look into past lives? Why do we need to remember them? If nature has put an iron curtain, a veil of forgetfulness, why do we need to lift that curtain and uh, remember our past lives? What is the very purpose of it? And second thing is, where are these memories stored? If there are memories, is it, is it stored in our brain, in neuronal cells? Or is it somewhere else it is stored? Because we know that when body is dying, even the brain, the hardware, uh, all the hardware of the body, the physical body, is completely going to be you know, burnt. We cremate the body, we bury the body. So there are these memories stored in case reincarnation is true. And uh, the third point I want to share today is about uh, different types of uh, past life experience, different ways people experience past life memories. Because not all the time uh, people get regressed into a past life through uh, hypnotic regression or past life regression or non-hypnotic methods. Some they have a very different ways to access past life information. So I'm going to share about that. And also certain clues to our past life that we find in our everyday life. These are the points that I'm going to share with all of you friends. So let us take the first uh, question. Why do we uh, need to look into past? Why do we need to remember past life memories? So this is the question mark for everyone. This question arises naturally in everyone. So most of the people, when they hear past life regression, they ask me this question. And they are very skeptical about it. And they tell that, oh, why do we need to go into past lives? Our goal is to move forward in life. Why do we need to go into past lives? So this is exactly the question asked by one of the, uh, you know, Mahabharata characters, Shakuni, Shakuni uncle. He's one of the important characters 
uh, vital, crucial role he played in Mahabharata war. So he asked Lord Krishna, he knew that Lord Krishna is a, a Paramatma. He reached to the supreme states of consciousness. So he asked this question that uh, Shakuni asked uh, Lord Krishna that I want to look into my future. I know you are a Paramatma. You can open my third eye. You can show me. You can show me my future. Because he knew always um, the ability or the skill and the wisdom of uh, Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna answered very beautifully. Though it is not uh, this part of the scripture is not available in India, I have come across, I have read this scripture. A part of this uh, scripture is the dialogue between Shakuni and Lord Krishna that happened. There are so many slokas, so many verses in Sanskrit. It was stolen from India. It was taken to Afghanistan. So they translated into their uh, language. Later on, uh, some of the researchers, they found this text, very ancient uh, text from Mahabharata times, Dwapar Yuga. So I, I was stunned to hear the answers from Lord Krishna. When I read that few slokas, Lord Krishna answered that, before you want to see, look into the future, if you want to sincerely go into, move forward into the future, you have to clear baggage that you carry from seven past lives, Sapta Janma, Sat Janma. Seven lifetimes of baggage we carry, we have to unload it. We are all carrying that karmic baggage and we have to clear it. Till then we will not have permission to step into the future times. So, dear friends, there is a purpose why we need to remember past lives. Many, almost 80% of uh, people, they carry uh, what is called as baggage, emotional baggage, karmic baggage, fears, patterns, so many things from past lives. And they are like uh, seeds, impressions, imprints in our astral body, which we carry. When we are incarnating in a new body, at the right, right time, all these imprints will show up. Till then, the pattern is in the subconscious, in the uh, non-expressed you know, mode, non-expressive mode. It is very dormant, like how many of the seeds, they are very dormant, they are dried seeds, when there is uh, raindrops that falls on the earth uh, ground and suddenly these seeds they start, start sprouting in the same way in this incarnation cycle we start everything fresh everything clean when we were born as children there's nothing that we remember almost like 99.99 percent of people they don't remember anything about uh, their past lives. Even they are not conscious about their birthing process. Only after they are born, maybe after a few months, they recognize that I have a separate body from the mother. So they identify their uh, unique body and unique expression. They identify the mother and father. But then, before that, all things are completely sealed. They are not there. We can't access that memory. Because there is a reason why nature has designed that way. We are not supposed to remember of past lives. But when we are talking about past life regression, why we need to look into the past lives? So there is a reason. It's a therapeutic reason. Number one is clinical and therapeutic reasons than many people who are suffering. They have these endless patterns. They have fears and phobias. They go through complexities in their life. They have health issues. So the origins, the roots are there in the past lives. We have to go to the 
roots of these issues and problems that we are facing in this current life. So some, they require this past life uh, explorations in order to heal themselves. Because so many, I have met so many people from last 30 years. And these 30 years of my research into this field, I know the value, the significance, what past life regression can offer, the, how much it benefits the humanity. It's a very, very beautiful tool of uh, therapy, therapeutic tool. And uh, so many case studies where people recovered from their medical illnesses. It's stunning to hear such uh, medical miracles. Even it's very unbelievable. Medically, we can't explain or we can't uh, tell logically, rationally what is happening. When they have these visions of past life, suddenly there is something shifting, shift in their uh, medical condition, shift in their body state, and shift in their mind that they experience. So I have... Uh, really seen such cases and uh, that's why I truly believe that there is uh, life after life, there's uh, reincarnation. We do come back because earth is a school and we do come back to continue the journey. Life will not end with one lifetime. Though certain religions, they don't speak about multiple lives, they only focus on only one single lifetime. But whereas in Bharat Desh, we know that uh, we speak a lot about past lives. When we open the Bhagavad Gita, entire Bhagavad Gita, the scripture is completely about reincarnation and love, karma and uh, karma siddhant, Lord Krishna was uh, teaching us about. He taught in many slokas that how many lifetimes we keep coming back again and again. Arjuna, I know all my past lives, I know all your lifetimes, but you have forgotten them. You are a sadhaka, you are a practitioner of meditation. Now wake up, open your third eye and see. So those who are ready, those who are uh, sincere practitioners of meditation, seekers, sadhaks, they are ready for past life explorations. Till then, uh, it's not required. That's why there is certain kinds of uh, uh, maturity levels are required to explore past lives. Either there must be a strong reason purpose behind why you need to explore a past life. It could be medical health condition, fears and phobias, or certain thoughts which are odd thoughts, or recurrent nightmarish dreams which are bothering you. Or it could be even sometimes people who are suffering with patterns, recurring patterns in their lives. So, so many medical conditions, relationship problems, unexplicable uh, kinds of uh, emotional states, like, for example, feeling all the time betrayal feeling in this lifetime, but there are no betrayal situation in this current life. They feel suspicion about everyone, mistrust towards everyone. So what is the reason behind it? So for this reason, one valid reason to explore past lives is these kinds of uh, therapeutic and to transform the baggage that we are carrying so that our soul becomes lighter. We shed all the baggage. The second important reason is to remember our purpose of life. Unless we see our immediate past birth, we really can't understand what is that I need to do now in this current life? Because it's a continuation. Life is a, a continuum. We have journeyed across lifetimes, so many lifetimes, approximately around 200 to 400 human lifetimes to complete uh, this journey here on the planet Earth. Before that, many animal, plant, mineral lives, so many different insect lives, 
and uh, we need to know at least one immediate past birth or one core lifetime significant core lifetime where it is directly linked with this current life or purpose that we are continuing so to discover our life mission or purpose why we are leading the life now why we have certain kinds of thoughts why do we have certain behaviors why do we have a kind of a certain personality structure now we need to discover this it's very natural that many meditators access these past life memories in meditation i have explored so many lifetimes uh memories in my deep meditation states it is possible for all meditators because a meditator becomes ready they understand that uh, life is not just uh, the five sensory uh, world life is not just what we see with our physical eyes life is even much beyond this there are certain things which are invisible to these physical eyes there are certain things that we Uh, don't remember our about our origins so a meditator uncovers discovers these past life memories very naturally and certain people i have found people they also remember a past lives through dreaming process many of them i met they report that yes i have discovered not through meditation not through a uh, hypnotic regression not through any kind of procedures like past life regression bridge techniques not all of them but i have seen my past lives just in my dream i remember very vividly and uh, recently i received uh, a mail email because i was uh, taking certain uh, online classes i was sharing about how past life memories are uh, going to be discovered during meditation so this lady after that class uh, after two days she written the email that she discovered a past life memory in her dream so the visions are so vivid and clear it's a kind of lucid dream it was as if she was transported to a different century it was almost like a uh, uh, five centuries back she was in china so she found uh, a kind of uh, ancient structures there pagodas and uh, those architecture chinese architecture she navigated through all those uh, dream visions in the swapna avastha she explored entire lifetime she got certain clues also in the dream she remembered everything when she woke up she written down everything later on she did the internet research where uh such names existing such places existing whatever that she saw a kind of beautiful a, a circular structure with a a kind of a statue of big buddha buddha statue and there is a fountain there is a fountain so later on she did the research to whether that kind of place exists anywhere in the world and she found exactly it is existing in actually hong kong <laughs> is a chinese uh, occupied place so it was invaded by chinese so she found that place exactly where she uh, uh, uncovered this memory so many people they explore past lives through dreams and also uh, many they experience through inner knowingness some they have a deja vu experience deja vu is a, a kind of a deep inner recognition of their past lives in the knowingness of the past lives they don't have any clue that it's not like they're speaking to a guru and guru is revealing it's just their soul remembers because they're so ready now so i heard so many of these experiences my research findings are uh, reincarnation is very much true i truly believe in reincarnation whatever lord krishna told uh whatever the lord rama told whatever the bharatdesh uh, uh, all the ancient rishis masters told is absolutely true truth nothing but truth and uh, the ancient scriptures offered uh, enough ways to explore discover all by ourselves 
and now the third point i want to share about is where are these memories stored how these memories are stored so we all know that even in this current life if we take into account our mind remembers many of these current life events we have this conscious mind which is 5% 95% is subconscious mind we know from science about this so when we are talking about mind mind is different from brain brain is the hardware mind is the software the mind is software and the hardware part is the neural cells there are mind and body mind and the body and this uh, uh, brain are interconnected so all these memories are stored in the subconscious uh, what is called as a reservoir or the library every memory is imprints are stored right from childhood and it's possible that if you are entering into an altered state of consciousness in a deep meditation state like the, how we today guided by master chandra uh, the, this guided meditation where we are transporting beyond time space we also some of us we access suddenly access these memories it happens spontaneously because the subconscious mind opens up in an altered state and the subconscious mind stores all the details every detail we have access to all the memories of our childhood though we have forgotten the memories of 3 year old child or when you are 2 year old when you are 1 year old when you are months old baby when you are just newborn baby you are just newly born one day old baby you can remember because all these memories are intact never all these memories are going to be erased they are going to be there and you can access even the memories of your womb memories when you are inside the mother's womb in utero memories it's fascinating this kind of research is conducted scientifically by our own scientists starting from sigmund freud later on carl gustav jung and stanislav grof all these are uh, really world renowned uh, psychologists psychiatrists who started looking for some certain kinds of uh, um, therapeutic uh, modalities they want to understand how this psyche of us psychology the mind is affecting the the body from the time of sigmund freud this search research was going on and carl gustav jung and later on the dr stanislav grof he was also inspired by uh, sigmund freud he continued the work to explore the subconscious mind he is the one who uh, started this uh, new branch of science called transpersonal psychology which deals with the reincarnation memories and all these things he has done phenomenal work about it and uh, he discovered that our subconscious mind really stores all these memories and how we access these subconscious memories from point of view from india from bharat desh our ancient scriptures never talks about subconscious mind but we have a very different nomenclature we say that we have panchakoshas we have sukshma sharira so one of the sukshma sharira we call we call them as pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha vijnanamaya kosha these three koshas we have to give a uh, english names to them etheric body astral body and causal body these three bodies stores the information of the past your etheric body stores it as energetic imprints because etheric body stores the energy manomaya kosha our astral body stores all that information about emotions fears thought forms beliefs all that is stored there vijnanamaya kosha this is called causal body karana sharira in this body is exactly entire memory record akashic record is stored 
So, our ancient uh, rishis, Patanjali Maharshi, Buddha, and we can say so many rishis, and from Jainism, from Jain scriptures also, there's enough of these tools of awareness given, shared by them, by the Tithankaras, that to explore these past life memories, to explore these deeper subtle bodies. In the subtle bodies, all this information is stored. In terms of our modern science, we call it a subconscious mind or unconscious mind but it is linked with the subtle bodies. So when we are vacating the body, when we're dying, we are just discarding this physical body. We are leaving this physical body. This physical body is just made of five elements, Pancha Mahabhutas. This mingles and mixes with all the five elements here. Our etheric body also disintegrates here. The astral body now travels, it journeys into what is called life between life states, LBL states, between lives, inter-life states. There are different lokas, there are different planes of consciousness. Our soul, our uh, astral body, our soul journeys into the, that plane. There we reside for some time. And uh, beginner souls, they incarnate from the uh, astral planes. They re take a, a rebirth. They take help of the many spiritual guides. We all have spiritual guides. So there is a life after death. There is a life between life and there is activity. There is a learning process that continues even after we die. So this is what is being explored in a past life regression. And this information is stored in our uh, subtle body. So dear friends, in the astral plane also, people, they go through what is called as uh, um, the second death. The astral body, they discard many of the advanced souls. They go into causal world. And the causal world, Karana Sharira, there are causal planes. There are different higher vibratory worlds. In that world, they reside for some time and they discard that Karana Sharira also then they reach to supra-causal worlds, celestial worlds, or they're called as even some of these uh, self-realized awakened beings, they reach to what is called as uh, Satya Loka. In uh, Sanskrit, we have a description about this Bhuloka, Bhuvarloka, Maharloka, Janaloka, Tapalok, Tapoloka, Satya Loka, these archetypal seven worlds. So, Satyaloka is the one who have realized uh, about completeness, the totality. We call it as enlightenment or nirvana or, or deep nirvikalpa samadhi states that a, a sadhak achieves. So when they go through the death process, they go through the third death also. So many of us, many those who are non-meditators, they have access to astral world. They reincarnate because they have not yet completely uh, expanded their consciousness beyond the astral levels. In the astral worlds also, there are lower astral worlds, there are middle astral worlds, there are higher astral worlds. So lower astral worlds, we in Bharatdesh, we call it as in our ancient scriptures, Narakaloka. There are actually lower astral planes. Means whatever that we do here, certain mistakes, certain blunders, certain errors, the consequences are there for that. And in that uh, journey of the uh, soul, in the life after death stage, the soul initially goes through these purgatory worlds, the transitory lower astral plane. There, we, whatever pain that we have hurt or pain we have given to others, we briefly go through that. We also have a realization that, oh, I have caused so much uh, hurt and uh, problems. I trespassed, I transgressed, I uh, really violated certain um, things here on the planet Earth. It's my blunder, I, missed, I did a committed mistake. And guides there, they help them 
to release from their guilt. They say that we, get, we have enough opportunities to learn. Don't worry. You will be given another chance to go back. This time, do better. This time, don't repeat the same thing. Don't repeat the same mistake again. Learn from this. There's a lesson that you need to learn. So whatever that uh, lessons that are not learned, we do come back from astral plane. We do reincarnate at the right time. And of course, there is always choice that is there uh, about choosing the family, choosing our mother and father. We choose our parents. Guides will help us enormously to make se uh, select the country, the religion, and our parents, all these things. Most of our lifetime events now we are living here are predestined or pre-designed, designed by our own selves. There is a script that we write there. Our guide says that, okay, these are the lifetimes that you have gone through, but these are the things that you missed out. You are still not yet learned these important lessons. You need to clear them. So we come back, we choose the circumstances, situations, even some of the illnesses, even part of the uh, you know, plan to learn lessons. And also we select so many things. So, so many interesting uh, things happen. So this is about uh, these memories that our soul always carries these memories. They are all in the sukshma sariras. Only when we are in a deep meditation states, with the help of so many those spiritual guides, there are many of us we have access to those spiritual guides. More than our physical guides, these non-physical guides, they really feel so happy that we are meditating. Because we have to empty the minds. We, we need to be available to them. And so that they can come and interact and they can transmit the wisdom. They give us such profound knowledge and wisdom. And they reveal about our incarnations also. They show us our past lives. So this is uh, uh, how it happens. These memories are accessible. Uh, for an important reason to spiritually progress. I have seen many spiritual sadhaks, practitioners, seekers who are on the path. When they discover past life memory, they now take a leap uh, in their consciousness. They grow leap in leap and bounds. So it is like uh, they, they unstoppable. Till then, something, they don't have a clarity about their purpose. Why they are now, what they need to do. They have always doubt whether, is it my purpose? Am I doing correctly? Most of us, we have this. So when I explored one of my past lives, where I was in Takshasila University, it became so clear to me. What is the, why I am back again? Why I incarnated again? It became so clear. I, I need to continue the work that I have uh, done in my previous life. So, because it's my uh, duty, it's my purpose, it's my mission. Otherwise, I will not be. My soul will not feel satisfied. Each one of us, we have come with a mission. Everyone, whoever incarnated, there is a strong purpose, a meaning for this life. We need to discover it. And past life regression uh, therapy is a very powerful tool. So Lord Krishna also given so many beautiful uh, formulas in Bhagavad Gita. He said, even though we have so many lifetimes of karmic baggage, Sanchita Karma and Praradha Karma, but all that can be nullified and neutralized. He talked about it uh, in several slokas. One of the slokas I can quote here, api chedasi pape bhya sarve bhya papa kurta maha sarvam dana plave naiva vrijanam santarishyasi. Oh Arjuna, you know 
there are many people who have sinned in multiple lives there are lot of negative uh, karma they have accumulated a lot of baggage is there even though they have their sinners still they can cross this ocean taking the help of this boat of wisdom this boat will carry them to the other shore he said in another shloka nanagni daddha karmanam the wisdom of the soul it erases it burns all the karmic seeds in one go that's why uh, many of the the uh, the self realize gurus they always insist that practice meditation why because meditation when we are opening our third eyes when we are awakening our subtle bodies what happens is we burn the karmas all the past life whatever the imprints whatever those uh, uh, karmic even including prarabdha karma for example prarabdha karma nobody can escape one has to go through that experience a tough experience a challenge in their life but a meditator a spiritual sadhak will have an advantage why because they will not go through that challenge uh, like uh, losing a limb but they meet an accident but we only just a, a small bruise will occur they may have a small hurt and a pain in the uh, leg but except that they will not be landing up in the hospital any very small incident that happens because they are sincerely practicing meditation so the prarabdha karma it touches us means a ripened karma it touches us a karmic situation will come but it will not be a disastrous experience and also in the sangha in the sajjana sangatya in a group consciousness group energy like minded people it uplifts the vibrational state of everyone this is called sajjana sangatya in the sajjana sangatya there is a possibility that all the sanchata karma load of baggage that we are carrying is nullified and uh, all those past life samskaras and uh, they are completely altered this is another important thing that we need to know so dear friends i am going to now share with you so you are most welcome to interact with me any time so i think i leave uh, at the end uh, for question and answers we'll have the dialogue So, so now the last point i want to share with you is clues to past lives certain interesting clues the 16 clues that i want to share with you which can really uh, help us to understand about uh, past life influences on this current life and also even we can understand about the past lives which are really that information is projected into this current life even with our own awareness we can grasp about the past lives number one clue is interest in a certain historical time period for example you are always drawn towards a certain historical time periods you resonate a lot when you hear about that particular story from a history time immediately there is a, a kind of a, you experience a resonance many people they uh, reported this experience uh, one person he was always interested about world war he is the greatest resonance is about world war and when he visited a past life memory with the help of past life regression therapy so what he had seen is the exactly the situation the world war he was uh, in the nazi concentration camp and he was in uh, uh, actually in the troop in the nazi army he was also part of that where he has to execute the punishments uh, he has to throw people into so he, he looked at it because in this lifetime he always carried a heavy guilt he always feels responsible for everything that uh, is been done everyone is sad he feels responsible for that and he could uh, completely explore and dissolve the guilt the best part is past 
type regression is therapeutic when we uncover the memories even the memories which are hard he tracked the root cause for this chronic guilt that he carried the guilt coming from uh, the times of world war time and he was executing his duty he was uh, actually want to run away from that place but he was forced to work in the nazi concentration camp he was forced he was a young person and all the youth in germany Austria and those places, uh, uh, Hitler used to pick them up, and they used to be put in the um, Nazi army. They were just putting them in the Nazi. They were forced to be trained as a military person, and they they forced to do certain things. So that time he didn't have any autonomy, and but still he carried the guilt. He could dissolve because it's a beautiful therapeutic tool, and uh, the second. Uh, I can share so many of these uh, kinds of experience of historical time periods. One more case study where uh, separation time between, uh, you know, uh, between uh, India and Pakistan, the migration that happened at the time, and so many deaths that happened. So many people died when people migrated from Pakistan to India, India to Pakistan. One person, he was uh, born as a Muslim in this life, but he always uh, interested to go to a temple, and he has to remove his uh, um, all these things. I think he has to uh, go secretively when all his friends are not looking at him, and he has to go to the temple. He really loves the temple, and he want to really find out the reason why he is so much drawn towards it. So what he has explored is uh, really uh, astonishing. In the past life, he was a Hindu. He was living at that time when this kind of uh, uh, migration was happening. There was a struggle between um, India and Pakistan that time. He was in the past life a Brahmin who was uh, doing a kind of priest work, job of a priest working in the temple. So it's phenomenal. When he explored, he was crying. He was with tears. And he could understand why he is drawn, resonating with uh, uh, always um, uh, Hinduism. And he want to worship God. He wants more than going to a mosque. He want to go to a temple. So it's really, it explains so many things. And the second is clue is uh, geographical areas countries. Many of us, we have resonances with certain countries. We, we are drawn towards certain countries. When we visit such countries, certain countries, we immediately feel that I have come home. We feel a kind of a home feeling. And always uh, we find that interesting experiences happening in this current life that we always are pulled towards certain places. You will get situations, opportunities to visit certain countries. And when you visit that country, you feel kind of knowingness. You know exactly all the information because you have lived in that particular country. So I, I was uh, uh, part of uh, you know, many of the European uh, countries, because I lived in Italy, I lived in uh, Spain in my past life. So when I visited them, I immediately felt a kind of knowingness, a deja vu feeling. I knew this place. I, I met my past life brother who lives in Spain. And, uh, you know, from the Qatar's time, we were uh, together. He was my brother. But he was also one of the Qatars who sacrificed his life. He jumped into the fire along with the old tribe. So that separation in this life, when I visited, I felt so like, uh, like Bharadesh is my home now, but I felt the same kind of feeling when I visited Spain. I could not explain logically, but when this memory came up, I understood the reason. And that uh, my, past, uh, my friend, who was my past life brother, he also reported the same experience which I have uncovered, the memory that 
where we were brothers from the past lives. We know each other. So friends, we are from different countries. We are international people. So in this lifetime, we are born here. Not, we might have been in other parts of the world. I have strong connections from many countries like China, ancient China, during the times of Lao Tzu. And uh, that time I lived, that time I was there. Uh, and part of my training uh, with Chinese wisdom, Taoist wisdom, I gone through that. So uh, I always feel a very, a very deep connection with ancient China, not with modern China, but the ancient China and Taoist wisdom, Lao Tzu, Tao, Taoist teachings. And the third interesting clue, dear friends, is art, artifacts, music, dance that resonate. We find that many of us are drawn towards certain kinds of arts, dances, music. Maybe you like a Russian ballet dance. Maybe you, you like a kind of Western classical or Mozart or uh, certain kinds of Western classical music or Eastern music. Maybe music from uh, Tibet, the Tibetan singing bowls. So it is like a, an interesting clue. And fourth one is your taste in fashion, jewelry, and home decoration. You always, you find uh, your past life completely represented in your home. This is what exactly Paramahamsa Yoganandaji talked about in one of his books. He said, if, uh, if I visit anyone's home, I can tell, I can read their past lives because we know that in that home, we keep according to our deep likes and dislikes and interests from we carry from past lives. If you are a monk from past lives, you keep all the pictures of gods, Buddha, and uh, our Rudrakshamala, our crystals, so many things. This shows that you have been a spiritual soul. You. In your library, if you, you someone finds a spiritual books, they can find out that oh, you carrying this kind of interest from multiple lives. Anyone visiting a, a, a someone's home, they can read their past lives. It, it is almost there in every element. The furniture they like, some of the royal past lives. Maybe somebody is a, a king or a a queen in the past life, in this lifetime, they have very rich decoration. They decorate everything in a very rich way. They like it that way. And uh, fifth clue I want to share is movies and books that resonate with you. Which book, when you have read it, opened your heart and immediately you resonated with the story of that book. It could be a spiritual book, could be even uh, any novel. But the story has touched your heart because it's a resonance. A movie also, not all movies really, uh, we, we don't even remember. After seeing the movie, we forget mostly. But certain movies we still remember. When I read Jonathan Livingston Siegel, written by Richard Bach, that's the book I resonated uh, like anything because it opened my heart, my mind, and completely it put me on the spiritual path. It's like a synchronicity that happened in my life. So many of us, we experience that. And uh, sixth clue is the education that you have chosen. Your hobbies in this current life. When you have leisure time, we don't do uh, except those things really we are very passionate and deeply interested about. Our hobbies explain a lot of past life uh, knowledge that we carry. And when we try to pursue the same kind of field of knowledge even in this current life. For example, doctors, healers are healers in many lifetimes. Artists, they are artists from many lifetimes. Because to master one art, maybe singing, dancing, maybe meditation, it takes so many lifetimes. We can't master it in one single lifetime. To, to reach to the stage of Bismillah Khan or say uh, Pandit Sri Ravi Shankarji, it's not easy. It's a sadhana of many lifetimes. 
so that's why in this lifetime many of us we pursue the same kind of field of interest will be born again in the some some kind of uh, families where these possibilities are there the music family where uh, we come in contact with music again or we'll be exposed to uh, many yogis or uh, meditator or maharu rishis so that we learn meditation from them so because our past lives resonances we find in this current life and seventh interesting clue is knowledge or talent beyond experience have you experience any kind of talent and experience any kind of uh, knowledge without any formal training you are able to exhibit it for example at a very younger age many people they are called as uh, child prodigies recently i have seen a video of 3 year old child reciting all the bhagavad gita shlokas 701 shlokas without non stop is able to recite a small boy even th third year we don't even know how to speak but he was reciting the shlokas bhagavad gita i was astonished because it explains that it's not just this lifetime this janma's uh, effort he carried it from past lives so some of them some of us we carry poetry we know one day we write uh, start writing poetry we know some of us we are creative artists we paint without learning about painting some of us are good orators we did not go to any school to learn how to speak how to deliver a best speech but it is so spontaneous for some of us because it's a skill knowledge that you had in the past life a meditator in the past life has again this skill of meditation in this current life they are drawn again into this current life so knowledge talent beyond experience this is an interesting clue and eighth experience eighth clue that we can find these childhood games and role plays that you uh, used to participate in because as a child we sometimes are very imaginative and we go on uh, playing certain roles also most of the times uh, children they play like a king and minister and soldier and they participating in a war situation and they will have role plays they invent games they the kind of imagination they invent a story they try to do this the kinds of roles and many times it's a past life story they are enacting at a very younger age it happens when i was around 5 year old child my favorite game i have invented is a game of silence in my school all my classmates i used to make them sit silently i used to tell them whoever not going to open eyes for 5 uh, minutes they are the winners they are going to be declared as a winner so i used to tell them on my favorite game is that not kabaddi not kho kho not uh, anything else but this is my favorite game as a child uh, later on when i came into this path i could recognize clearly my practice of meditation that i have done in multiple lives a lot of practice of silence that i have practiced which i always carried in my soul this is also very interesting clue i met so many children one child uh, used to play a game like she plays with her barbie dolls and tie a rope around her neck and hang the doll and uh, parents were surprised to see that and uh, they thought it's a kind of psychological problem they she was shown to many psychologists they tried to counsel her she was a young child she said she still repeating the same kind of behavior she always hang the the teddy bear and uh, when we were speaking to her she said it's the past so she narrating about what happened to her in a past life she was hanged to death so she was a woman in a village it's a kind of injustice done to her and the public humiliation she was hanged to death in that lifetime so as a child she was trying to tell to the parents look at me this what happened injustice happened to me in my past life because this what the information she want to share so she used to always do this kind of game so many children they have these kinds of specific behavioral patterns which start showing up at a very younger age 
our conventional psychology cannot understand this phenomena it's coming from past lives there's so much of research is going on about this right now and uh, ninth clue is have you experienced uh, recurring patterns any kind of pattern which is repeating in your life that's a clue a pattern a negative pattern a positive pattern a seasonal pattern every year annually is something that is repeating and uh, we do have many patterns in our life like um, from childhood there is a kind of theme which is repeating all the time there is a theme which is like in the background it repeats again and again again and again so that's a clue that it's coming from the past lives and the 10th clue is your reactions your reactive states your emotional states your sensations that you experience in your body it's a clue about your past lives certain times you can't logically explain why you go into a very reactive state why you have certain emotional uh, stuff coming out a catharsis occurs all the time spontaneously our medical science can't explain this phenomena but we know that it's coming from past lives it's a clue and injustice happened to a woman who was uh, burnt alive in the past life she was sexually molested in the past life in this current life she had a very good childhood nothing no bad circumstances no bad events happened in her life but whenever she reads the newspaper whenever she reads about news about any woman who was sexually molested she reacts rage comes into her and she used to wonder her parents tried to console her and she took counseling with psychologists but it was not helping later on when she explored her past life she understood the origin is the injustice done to her in the past life she was actually molested in the past life she was burned after the molestation she was burned and in this life she has great rage and reactive behaviors and it uh, anger she hates men in this life and after that she went through the deep healing process past life regression is a really a very profound healing tool and the 11th uh, interesting clue is dreams and visions have you experienced any recurrent dream most of the dreams are symbolic even there are many dreams we experience which are past life dreams we can recognize the past life dream they going to be um, you recognize them that you are in a very ancient settings it said not this century you are in a different type of body your body structure was different your physique was different you 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 will recognize past life dreams will come up many times and visions when we are meditating when our first time and our third eye is opening our pineal gland is activated and totally this is opening that time we have glimpses of the past lives repeatedly certain visions will appear initially we have colors geometric patterns and shapes later on certain visions certain faces will come to us we don't know we don't recognize them but is connected to past lives later on we have a fourth interesting deja vu feeling deja vu sense of familiarity it's a french word which means sense of familiarity with places people and situations when you are meeting a, a person you feel a kind of strange connection with that person maybe first time you are meeting but you feel that you know this person from a uh, long time this is called deja vu when you visit a place also you know that you have visited it before or a deja vu in situation many times situations recur a past life situation is repeating you feel a kind of deja vu this is an interesting clue 13th clue is strong feelings that you have towards someone that you met either attraction or repulsion friends do meet in this current life 
true friends always they meet again and again again and again if you are meeting a person more than 3 times four times know that it's a past life connection and you have a resonance you have a deep connection you resonate through a heart energy it's the past life connection and even enemies also they meet when the enemies they meet they have a repulsion they have inexplicable you know they don't vibe with each other they want to just avoid each other it also happens and the 14th clue is uh, preferences and personalities we have a strong preference in this current life we will have likes and dislikes it why do we like certain things why don't we like all the things is is connected with past life there is a resonance that we have with certain things in this life even a personality that we have now is shaped up from many lifetimes for example when we meet a person we understand this person has a, a, a personality of uh, a warrior because in the past life he is a warrior or the a personality of a sage we feel so soothing with certain people when we meet or a person could be um, an artist in the past life an artistic kind of personality though they are in the scientist uh, field the field of science but still their artist personality is there so we find these kinds of personality structures right uh, when we are meeting people and 16th clue is synchronicities that occurred in lives meaningful occurrences meaningful coincidences they are very meaningful our life turns around they are called turning points in our life if i have not met brahma shri pitama patri ji my life would have been completely a waste because i could not have progressed because he played a very important role he through him i learned about meditation this is so important because it's a synchronicity because it all happened like a synchronous day i was traveling in a bus overnight travel in a bus my co passenger was a stranger i never met him i used to that time i used to have certain habits like i was smoking because smoking cigarettes was my habit when i developed as a as a college student and after the, the bus stopped i smoked the cigarette later on got into bus and i shared the nut powder with my uh, passenger co passenger and he started speaking about meditation the whole night he was speaking about meditation i asked him one question how do you know all these things i never heard about meditation before i was just 17 year old that time and he said there is a patri sir who teaches meditation i learned from patri sir when i asked him the next day when we get down the bus please take me to that guru that master i feel this is a synchronicity i never speak to strangers i never offer anything like uh, nut powder but that day i felt like giving him nut powder that's why whenever i share this experience with patri ji he says it's nut powder enlightenment they always jokes that is a synchronicity and many synchronicities occurs in our life it's a very interesting clue and uh, dear friends these are certain clues that we can find in this current life now i open this to or uh, have a kind of chat with you discussion and question and answers uh, you are most welcome to uh, ask me anything uh, any question that you have i am glad that uh, uh, shri kartikeyan ji is uh, with us today i feel a very deep connection with shri kartikeyan ji um a kind of fatherly i feel like uh, uh, i am his son in one of your my past lives i feel that you are my uh really uh, a, a kind of a fatherly feeling i get when i meet you sir and also chandram uh, also i always uh, feel uh, deja vu from takshashila university i feel that kind of connection that uh, immediately that very moment i feel a very deep bond and connection and the thanks for giving me this opportunity and thanks uh, kartikeyan ji and uh, chandrashekar ji 